What we all know is true is that the stress and the hurried pace that we kind of live in, it's messing up our lives. Just, and it's not even a religious thing, it's just a thing thing. Nobody looks at society today and says, well, I think that everything's going great. I mean, when we look at our schedules and we look at how many prescriptions are getting filled for anxiety and how many people are just at the end of their rope, nobody looks and says, hey, we should keep doing exactly what we're doing because it's working great. Nobody says that. We all know we've got some problems. The question is, how do we, how do we make some progress in that? And so that's what we hope to kind of tackle Today, 49% of people, according to some studies that I looked at this week, 49% of people report feeling regular, ongoing stress. That number for mothers goes way, way up. Some of you can relate. 68% of mothers with children at home feel an overwhelming amount of stress. And Harvard did a study about the seven top kind of seven things that people are stressed out about. See if any of these can you can relate with. Schedule, anybody stressed out about their schedule? You just got too much going on? It's not bad things, it's just thing things. Money, some of you are stressed because you have too much money and you're just not, how am I gonna spend all of the money that I have? Some of the other people in the room would be happy to help you unload some of that stress. Uh, we can arrange for that, but that's a stress that some of us have. Work stress, you, you don't like your boss, you don't feel like you're getting enough money, whatever that looks like for you. Health problems, but not only just your own personal health problems, but maybe you're taking care of a family member and they've got health problems. Maybe you're taking care of your aging parents or maybe your kids are having some chronic disease, that's a stressor for a lot of our lives. Just the general family dynamics. You know, maybe it's fine now, but come Thanksgiving, you know, you're going to see them, and it's going to be tense because they're going to bring up this, and it just gets a little bit weird. Those family dynamics that all of us have, not, not my family, but other people's family, you know, has those type of things. And then just personal Appearance. You just don't like the way that you look. Maybe it's a weight thing. Maybe it's a, a scar thing. What, whatever that looks like. And we have these. I don't think there's anybody that's immune to that. But then the result of that, we've got more disease. We have heart disease. We've got all of this blood pressure problems. We gain weight because of the stress. Anybody else like me? I'm a stress eater. I'm a stress eater. And so when I get stressed, I go for the fridge. And how many of you know I'm not looking for a carrot? And can anybody with me? That a, a carrot's not going to solve it. An Oreo cookie absolutely would help me feel a little bit better. And so there's, there's that part. And then we sleep less. Anybody getting less sleep than they need or that they think that they should have? And it just is this cycle because I'm stressed and that causes me some problems and that problems causes me some stress. And there's just this cycle and it's really really frustrating so today we're going to try to answer two questions and they both come out of first peter if you have a bible this morning if you want to follow along first peter chapter five and we're just going to read two verses it's just two verses for the whole day and one of these verses you almost certainly know especially if you grew up in the church or grew up kind of knowing some bible things one of these verses you almost certainly know if that's your you the other verse, though, that's before it is maybe the more important of the two. So the two questions we're going to ask today is, how can I reduce the stress in my life? So the stress that I have, some of it, Paul, uh, Peter is going to say, some of the stress that we have is self-induced. That there are some things that we can do, two things, in fact. We're, we're going to look at three things today. Two of the things have to do with how do I take some of this self-induced stress, it's a me thing, and how do I reduce that? That's the first question we're gonna ask. And then, the unavoidable stress, the stress that I can't do anything about, it's not my fault, it's external things that are happening to me, how can I react to those better? How can I not fly off the handle? How can I not have to go back and apologize to somebody later because of some things that I said in the heat of the moment because we're not gonna be able to reduce all of your stress, so how do I respond to it better? But here's, here's kind of the carrot this morning that I think if we take what Peter says seriously, by the end of today, and I know it, it seems like kind of pie in the sky, but by the end of the day, you could actually have less stress if we were to take what Peter says seriously. And we're gonna talk about three things. Let me give you all three of them right at the front because some of you are gonna fall asleep or you'll lose internet connection or whatever that looks like for you. Let me give you all three of them and they do rhyme because if you've been around us very long, you know I love a rhyme. I'm basically a rapper. I don't know if you knew that. 
or not. Mini Eminem is what they call me, and uh, album's coming out soon. But here's the three things that Peter's going to say. Humbly obey, embrace, delay, and cast away. That's the three things that Peter is getting ready to tell us. The top two is how that we take away some stress that I have. Because again, some of it's self-induced. There's some things that I'm experiencing that I don't have to experience. We can solve that by humbly obeying and embrace delay. And then how can I, with that un, uh, unavoidable stress, how can I kind of cast that away from me? And my hope, again, my hope is that, that by the end of today, some of you could actually experience less stress. We'll start with the first one. It's humbly obey. Now this is, again, I have to be honest with you. This really only works if you are a follower of Jesus. So if, if you're still trying to kick the tires of faith and not sure if it's all real and not sure if it's all true, this is something that uh, Christians embrace. And so this is something that if you at some point decide to step across that line of faith, this is something that you should do. That what, we're, what Peter's gonna tell us is that if we would choose to humbly, hum, humble just means you know better than me, that if we would choose humbly to put ourselves under what God's boundaries are for our life, it's gonna reduce our stress. That if we would think about what does God want for my family, what does God want for my parenting, what does God want for my career, what does God say about how I should deal with my anger, what does God say about unforgiveness, what does God say about sex, what does God say about all of these areas of my life, if I would look there and humbly get under that, it's going to reduce the stress because here's what God has given us as. He's given us a roadmap for life. And some of us pick and choose and we say, well, I want the good, but I really kind of also want to do my things. Well, it's, it's adding to the stress of our life. First Peter chapter five, the first verse or the first half of verse number six, humble yourselves. If you want to reduce some stress under your life, the first thing we have to do is, well, I humble myself because God knows more than I do under God's mighty hand, that there is a really close connection between humbleness and obedience, that I'm humble because I recognize, God, there, there are some things that you see that I don't see, and I, there are times where I get to this crossroads that I know what you want and I know what I want, and those things are, are different, and so I'm going to humbly, instead of going my way, that at the moment seems so much better, I'm going to humbly go your way instead because I just think you must know something that I don't. You must see something that I'm not able to see, that I, I, I don't know everything, and so because I don't know everything, I'm wise enough to know maybe you know something I don't know. That consi to consistently, to consistently live outside of God's boundaries is to live with unnecessary stress. Let me give you an example. If a husband, husbands that are in here, husbands that are watching online, if you were to take seriously what God says about how to love your wife, your marriage would have less stress today. If you just decided to take that seriously, if you just decided I'm going to, to serve my wife, I'm gonna love my wife, I'm going to look out for her interest above my interest, I'm gonna put her first instead of me going first, I'm gonna honor her, that would reduce some stress in your marriage, you could do that. You could do it because all of us, those that are married, we know that we've got some stressful marriages. There's some stressful conversations. And this isn't the blanket, it's gonna fix everything. You'll never have an argument, you'll never have a fight, you'll never have a problem. It's just saying, I'm going to live my life as a husband the way that God calls me to live my life as a husband, not the way that my dad did it. Not the way that my coworkers did it. Not the way that I, I see in society around me. I'm going to be a loving husband as Christ gave up himself for his church, so I'm going to give up myself for my wife, and that is going to reduce the stress in your life. Kids, I know, you, you know it's not what you want to hear, but kids, if you were to obey your parents the way that Scripture says to obey your parents, the stress in your household would get turned way down. It just would. It just would. And I know that you think they're wrong. And I know that you don't think they know what they're talking about. But if what Scripture says is true about honor your father and mother, if you just decided, I'm gonna take that seriously, it's going to reduce 
this choice. That any time I choose to say, God, I'm going to live outside of your boundaries, I add stress to my life. I add things to my life that don't need to be there. That if I, that if I just say, I, I'm going to refuse to cheat on my taxes, what does that do? It reduces the stress because there's no stress like the stress of, I wonder if I'm going to get found out. I wonder if somebody's going to catch me. I know that everybody's doing it, and in my industry, this is just how you get ahead, and in my area of work, this is just what everybody does, but the stress of, I wonder if somebody's going to find out, that is a stress that you could yourself reduce. We say it over and over again here. Some of you have heard me say that following Jesus will make your life better and make you better at life. Do we have that slide, Kayla? Yeah, following Jesus. It's not gonna make your life perfect. It's not going to make your bank account grow necessarily. It will just make your life better because God knows some things that we don't know. That if there is a command from God about how to live and what to, what to, how, how to use my money, it's because he knows better than I do. And it's my life that is at stake. That my decision to humble myself under God's mighty hand is a decision to reduce the stress of my life. I'm just telling you, it'll make your relationships better. It will make the choices that you make when you're under stress better. It will make you have to apologize less. It will make you have to ask for forgiveness less. It will keep you from living with the stress of bitterness. Man, the stress of bitterness will wear you out. But if we'll choose to take God seriously, that he says, I'm, I'm going to forgive before they apologize. I'm going to make the choice, the really hard choice. I'm not going to hold this over their heads. I'm not going to look for opportunities to get back. What does that do for me? It reduces the stress of my life. And again, if you've been around us very long, you've heard me say, everything that God says to do and not to do is for our benefit, not his. It's so that we are better off, not that he's better off. He, he, he doesn't need anything from me. God is not better off if I follow his commandments. I am. I'm the one that is improved when I follow God's way of living. Let me prove it to you. Deuteronomy chapter 10, he's talking to the the Israelites. What does the Lord your God ask of you? Except to fear the Lord. Talking about humbling yourself. God, I'm going to do it my way. And walking in his ways to love him and to worship the Lord with all of your heart and all of your soul. Keep the Lord's commandments and statues. Do we have that, Caleb? Are we with me? Oh, there it is. Keep the Lord's commandments and statues I am giving you today. Why would, I, why would I do that, God? Well, it's for your own good. Some of us, we've lived long enough to look at different times in our life where we knew what God wanted. We just didn't care. We went our own way, and it added unnecessary stress to our life. And we wish we could go back to that season. We wish that we could say, I want to do that again. The way that you parent your kids is sometimes based on, I did it the wrong way. I wish that you would do it this way. It's for your own good. It's not for my good. It's for you. And so do you want to reduce the stress in your life? Just decide today, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. And for most of us, we don't need to to work that out. Most of us already know what he says. We just don't care. I mean, I don't want to just get right in our face a bunch, but most of us don't need this theological class of, I wonder what God wants me to do. Most of us know the answer to that. We just don't want to do it because we're not humble. Peter says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. It will reduce your stress. Here's the second thing that we do. We humbly obey, and then we embrace, we embrace delay. We say, I I, I want to get to a place that I, I, I see other people at. And so sometimes the cause of our stress is that we have this desire, I want to get to somewhere that I'm not, I want to be somebody I'm not. I see all of my friends around me and they're getting the new house and they're doing the renovations to their house and everybody seems to get ahead of me. And so in order to keep up with somebody else, I go and I pick up an extra shift or I I work extra long hours or I pick up another job or I max out a credit card so that I can get to somewhere I'm not so that I can be something I'm not. And what does it do? It adds stress to my life because then I got this credit card to pay off. 
or I've got this bigger mortgage that I didn't used to have, and so I've got to keep working longer hours. I've got to keep doing more. I've got to keep doing what I don't really want to do because of some choices that I've made, that I have the des- desire to be something or to keep up, and that pushes me to do something that adds stress to my life. Maybe you, you're single, and you really, really, really want to be married, but you've got some kind of higher standards than other people, and you see other people getting married, and you're just kind of always a bridesmaid, never the bride, and so you decide, in order to be something I'm not, I'm going to lower my standards a little bit, and I become something I'm not, and it adds, what does it do? It adds stress to my life. It makes me be something and do things or or become the type of person I didn't want to be. Teenagers, You're getting left out, nobody's inviting you to the parties, you feel like you're the odd man out all the time, and you say, well, I wanna be included, I don't wanna be lonely, I wanna have something to do on a Friday night. And so you just kinda lower your standards and say, well, I can get into that group, and you start to do things that you really didn't want to do, and you don't really even want to be doing in the moment, it's just part of being in the group, and what does it do? Well, it adds, just adds stress, because again, there's no stress like the stress of being found out. There's no stress like the stress of having to be something I'm not really. All of us, all of us have the desire, right, to keep up and to move up. That's that's not a bad desire. That's not a sinful desire. There's nothing wrong with that. You want a nicer car, it's no problem. You want to go on a nice vacation, awesome. You need a little bit bigger house, that's that's great. The, The problem is not the moving ahead. The problem is at what pace do I do that? that? That you might be sitting with us this morning or watching online and you're preparing yourself to make a decision, and can I just invite you to just hit the pause button and just ask a question. Maybe you've never asked it before. Pause pause and just ask, is this gonna add unnecessary stress to my life? If if doing this, it's not a bad thing, it's not sinful, you're not gonna have to ask for forgiveness for it. But is going in this direction, doing the renovation, buying the thing, going on this, is that gonna add unnecessary stress to my life? Not because it's not the right thing, it might just not be the right timing. Because, and again, some of us that are older could share some experiences. Years and years of stress and regret because we wanted to have something we didn't have, be something we weren't, and we went further faster than we should have, I gotta pay off this credit card, I gotta pay off this house, I've gotta do all this stuff, and it just adds that stress. Here's what Peter said. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. I'm gonna humbly obey. So that, what, what happens when I do that? So that he may exalt you, and other, other translations say lift you up, and here's, here's the problem that we struggle with. At the proper time, that what, what Christians are invited to do is say, God, I have this desire to move up and to make progress, but I am going to wait for your timing. I'm not going to force it my way. I'm going to say, God, I have this desire to live in a bigger house. I have this desire to start a business. I have this desire to start a second location of my business. I, I ha- There's something inside of me that wants that, but instead of me rushing forward like a bull in a china shop and adding stress to my life, I'm going to wait for you and your timing. Where, where are you leading me in this season of my life? What is the proper time for me? That I, I again... I want God to be the one to lift me up, but sometimes he takes longer than I want him to take. Anybody ever had that experience? The God, I want it now. All right, I want things to start happening. Everybody else seems to be advancing. Everybody else is getting the raises. Everybody else, everybody else. And I feel like I'm left behind, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna embrace delay. I'm going to choose to wait God, at the proper time, at the time that you've called me to, you're going to be the one to exalt me. When it comes to my career, when it comes to my purchases, when it comes to my marriage, when it comes to my investments, all the areas of my life, God, I'm gonna wait on your timing. I'm gonna allow you to advance me at your pace, not my pace. And sometimes that pace is slower than I want it to be, but I'm gonna embrace delay. I go to middle school track and tournaments because of, of my kids. And sometimes what we see, because my, my son runs like the mile or the, the two mile in cross country, it happens as well. We see it all the time, like in the, in the little bit of a longer distance. If you've ever been to a middle school tournament, you've seen this. A kid will just fly out of the starting line and just take off like he's running a 100 yard dash. And all of a sudden, he'll be so far ahead. And everybody in the stands except that kid knows that's not gonna end well for that kid at all. He's going 
way too fast. His body is not prepared for him to do that. And sure enough, he gets about 300 yards into a two mile race and he is dying. What happened? He went way too fast. He was running the race that everybody else ran. His pace was just off. Or some people run way too slow. They get so worried about, I've got to run for two miles. And so they just run at a pace that's way too slow, and they end up way, way, way in the back. The, the, the pace is wrong. But here's what you'll see with professional athletes. You, you've been seen if you watch track and field, the Olympic trials are happening and all these things. And what people, the professionals will do, if they want to hit a certain time, maybe they want to break a record, whatever it is, they'll hire a pacer. And that pacer's job is to do one thing, to get them around the course at the exact right time. And it takes, for the other runner, it takes all the pressure off. That pressure's, that, 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 that runner's only job is not to be watching the watch, not to be looking at the other people around him. I've just got to stick with the pacer because I know that the pacer is going to get me to the finish line at the timing that I need to be at the finish line. It's not about am I in third place, am I in seventh place, am I in first place, am I going too fast, am I going too slow? The stress is off. I'm just hanging with the pacer. That's what God invites us to be, that he wants us to not go out so far that we add all this stress in our life, but then also to have enough faith that when he says, come on, let's go, to embrace that as well, that I embrace delay. Proverbs said it this way, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't rely on your own understanding. Don't pace yourself in all of your ways, in your investments, in your entrepreneurship, in your money, in your marriage, in your parenting, all of it. Acknowledge him, and he is going to make your path straight. Here's a prayer that some of you should start to pray, that God help me live with the faith to keep up with you and the patience to wait for you. I don't want to get so far behind you that you're saying, come on, I've got bigger and better things for you, but I also don't want to have my own ideas that rush me to a place that I say, oh man, I, I, I'm in some trouble. I'm like that kid that's got two miles to run and at 300 yards, I'm exhausted. They, I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna put you first. I'm gonna live your way and what God promises is he will be the one that lifts you up. I'm gonna humbly obey. God, how do you want me to live my life? I'm gonna embrace delay. God, it's taking longer than I want but I'm gonna choose to go at your pace because you're not adv against advancement, you're not against progress, he's against that being the primary thing of my life. That if my primary focus, in my, I'm in my 40s now, some of you are in 30s, some of you are in your 20s, wherever that lives, lands for you, if your primary focus is advancement, if you let that be the driver of your life, here's what's gonna happen. Some of us could tell you stories. You will force things you're not ready for. And what will it do? It'll add stress. Some of you are under stress right now that you can't get out of. There is no answer. To, I, I, I can't solve this. Because what, what happened? There was a moment in your life, there were some decisions that you made. You say, I've got to get there, I've got to do that, I'm getting left behind. And so you made the purchase, you did the thing, you started whatever it was, and you became what you weren't, and you got what you didn't have, but five years later, 10 years later, I've still got a lot of stress. I've still got a lot of stress. So how do we remove some stress? Well, I, I humbly obey, I embrace delay, that's really hard for me because I'm a go-getter, and then that's how I reduce some stress. Some of you could do this today. And then what about that unavoidable stress in my life? Well, here's the third one, that we cast away. I humbly obey, God knows how I should live my life. I embrace delay, God knows the timing in which to advance me. And then to cast away, I say, God, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you that unavoidable stress in my life. The things that, you've gotta have a place to live. You gotta wear clothes. Your kids need to go to school. You need a job. You need to be able to pay the bills. Sometimes you blow a tire. Sometimes your hot water heater goes out. It's just, it's nobody's fault. It's just unavoidable and it's stress. And so what the apostle Peter says, here's our two verses together. Humble yourselves therefore, I'm gonna humbly obey, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you. He's gonna advance me at the proper time and now, now, some of your translations, if you have your Bible with you, some of your translations put a period here. A better translation is this one, where it puts a comma. It's a continually thought. It's not two separate things. I don't have one without the other. I humbly obey, I embrace the lay, and then because I've done those two things, I am then invited. I'm gonna cast all of my cares onto him because why? Well, he cares about me. 
that if I'm willing to humble myself and say, God, I'm gonna live my life your way, and I'm gonna go at your pace, at your timing, then all of those things that I really can't do anything about, I mean, doggone it, sometimes tires just blow. And you know what? The kids don't get into the school they applied for. and they're just It's nobody's fault. It's just unavoidable stress that once I've humbly obeyed and embraced the lay, I can say, God, there are some, still some cares that I have, and I can't do anything about them. I've put in the application. I've, I've reduced my credit card debt. I've done all these things. I, I cannot solve this problem by obeying you or embracing the lay. And so, God, in this moment, I'm just casting it onto you. What are the cares of life? Just the unavoidable responsibilities. We all have them. The, the, the pressure and the stressors, I just cannot avoid. You, again, you got to have a job. You've got to be able to pay the bills. You've got to have a, a place to live. That we have permission when we've humbly obeyed and when we've embraced the lay. God, the, the rest of these are yours. I, I can't carry these on my own. Why? Because he cares for you. In other words, here's, here's what the apostle Peter is, is saying. You matter to God. And the things that are stressing you out and overwhelming you and you're, you're doing your best and, and you're o- obeying and, and delaying all those other things, you matter to God. You, you're important. That as I walk humbly and as I wait on God's timing, God, here are these other things. And it sounds... I'll, some the pushback of it. Well, that sounds pretty irresponsible. That sounds just like pie in the in the sky. And so here's let me just give you what maybe there's a third option that I haven't figured out. I'd love to hear the third option if, if you have one. But the options that I've been able to figure out is that I handle it or I let God handle it. That it's easier on my shoulders or it's on God's shoulders. And I have done all that I can do. Because right, if 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 it was an easy problem to solve, you would have already solved it. If it was just something that you could do, you would have already done it. And so the options that I can think of is that I carry it and I'm sleepless and I'm hard to get along with and I've got a short temper and I've got a quick fuse and I'm saying things that I regret and I'm having to apologize because all of these stresses and I'm carrying it and I'm worried and I've got an ulcer and I'm on medication, all of these things. Or I just take God seriously and say, God, these are yours. I've done all that I can do. I've done the best that I can. And so because you matter, or because I matter to you, I'm casting these on you. And it's an act of, it's not laying, I'm not laying at his feet. I'm, God, I've got this meeting and I've prepared the best I can. I've got this test and I've studied the best that I can. And so all the other cares I'm throwing on to you. Put in, put in the applications. Go out on some dates if you're single. Come on. Go out on some dates. If you got a marriage, it's a problem. Apologize. Learn to know each other uh, uh, more. Put some money in your 401k for retirement. There's things that you can do. But at the end of the day, whose responsibility is it? If I've humbly obeyed and if I've embraced delayed, I, I'm invited to cast away. A missionary said it this way. God is ready to assume full responsibility for the life wholly yielded to him. Lord, I'm going to do all that I know how to do. And I'm trusting you with the responsibility to take care of the rest. God, you knew. You knew I was going to lose my job. You knew that. I didn't know that, but you knew that. God, you knew that this thing was going to break, and I don't have enough money in my bank account to pay for that. You knew that was going to happen. You you knew that he was going to walk out on me. You knew that she was going to leave me. You knew that my kids were gonna turn out this way. You knew that the economy was gonna crash. I didn't know it, but you knew it. And so as I am humbly obeying you to the best of my ability, and I'm waiting on your timing, God, the rest of it, you're you're responsible. This stuff is yours because the other option is me carrying it and I will crush under the weight of it. It's too heavy for me. And so I over and over, it's not a one-time thing. I over and over again, I cast on you. And the reason that I think we should take Peter's word seriously is because of the type of life that Peter lived. Peter was not writing this from an ivory tower where everything was just great. He was writing this with the daily, moment by moment threat of being brutally murdered. And he was writing it to Christians who daily were under the threat of families being ripped apart and killed and tortured in ways that we can't even fathom. Their life was not good. 
They didn't know where their next meal was coming from. They had been expelled from the synagogue. They were looked down on in society. This was not a happy life that they were living. And yet Peter, who would later be crucified upside down, if you can imagine it, he says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, and he will lift you up, casting all of your cares upon him, because in the chaos, in the worry, in the concern, in the fretting, you have a God that cares for you. That's, listen, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. Did you know that that one little line is the thing that separates all other, religion, all other religions from Christianity? No other religion promises that. No other religion promises a God who loves and cares and is looking out for you. That's not a promise of another religion. The promise of Christianity is that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And then do you think he's just gonna leave you to your own devices? No, if he went that far, don't you think he knows about the job that you need? Don't you think he knows that you're lonely and need a, a marriage? Don't you think he knows that you need a, a more money to be able to do all the things? He knows and he cares. And so what's our response to that? I'll walk humbly, I'll wait patiently, I'll trust you with the rest. I'll walk humbly. That'll reduce some of your stress this morning. If you'll decide today, God, I'm gonna do it your way, it'll reduce the stress. You might have to downgrade your living some, but I'm gonna embrace delay. I'm gonna wait on your timing. I, I, I know where I wanna be, but I'm not gonna force my way there. I refuse to allow society to set my pace. I refuse to allow my friends to set my pace. I'm, I'm just running with you. One more time, let's read it. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Do we have that slide maybe? Yes, yeah, there it is. Humble yourselves therefore under, God's, under, under the mighty hand of God. Why? So that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all of your cares on him because he cares about you. One last thing then we're going to, to be done is that the greatest stress that maybe you've never thought about, maybe you've never even, or you push it to a side. I think the greatest stress that all of us will have to answer is what happens when I die? Well, what happens when this life is over? And the promise of Jesus is that he can remove that stress from your life, that we can come to him in humbleness and say, God, I'm gonna place my life in your hands. I'm gonna trust in what you did on Calvary. I'm gonna trust in the death and resurrection of Jesus. And that's not gonna make your life perfect. It just removes that stress. What happens when I die? The stress of have I been good enough or uh, is my good outweighed my bad? That's a, that's a stress you don't have to live with. That's a stress that can be solved by saying, Jesus, I'm gonna choose to follow you. I'm gonna invite you to be the author and the Lord of my life. And so the question that I want you to wrestle with, have you crossed that line of faith? Have you let God take that stress away from you? Because here's God's promise, is that though you can come to him, all who are weary and heavy laden, what's he gonna do? He'll give you, he'll give you rest, rest that you can't get on your own. If you've never crossed that line of faith, today could be your day. Come talk to me a little bit later and, and say, God, would you, you pray with me? It'd be my honor to cross that line of faith with you. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for Peter, who chose to live a life of faith even under really challenging circumstances. Lord, I don't know where all of this hits for, for some of us. Some of us, we are on the cusp of a decision, and Lord, we needed to hear this from you. And so I'm praying that you would give us enough faith to hit the pause button and say, is this decision on your timing or is it just gonna add extra stress to my life? Lord, I'm praying that those, the only thing that they needed to hear this morning is I need to start humbly obeying. Lord, for all of us, if, if, if you see areas of our life where we're not following you, Lord, would you give us the courage to say, whatever it costs, I'm gonna choose to follow you so that we can avoid some of those stressors. And Lord, some of us are doing the best that we can. We're humbly obeying we're waiting on your timing, but we just got that unavoidable problems in our life. Lord, I'm praying that we would choose to cast all of those cares onto you. We can't do anything about them. We've done our best. And so, Lord, we don't wanna get crushed under the weight of worry and anxiety and stress. We wanna instead give it to our loving Heavenly Father because you're big enough, you're strong enough. You can do what we can't do. And so give us the faith to do what we need to do with the words that we've heard today. Give us the courage to do it and that we would begin to remove some of those stressors in our life. It's in your name that we pray, amen.